All right, sea dogs. I want to take a minute to go over geography with us. This is a big one. Um, we're going to spend today and tomorrow working on this. Um, it's the same screencast. It's the same slideshow. However, I kind of want you to do it in two parts. Um, when you scroll down here, it's going to come to like a break time. And that's like an okay point to stop. But it's you're not done for the day. You need to kind of review everything you just went over. Um, but we'll explain that more when we get to it. So again, today we're going over geography and the first things we got to talk about, we're going to split it into two sections. Um, but you need to know the continents, the cardinal directions, and the three oceans that we're going to use in this class. I'll specifically explain those. That's today's goal. Tomorrow's goal is to refresh or go over again the five themes of geography. So let's go ahead and do what I always do on the notes is we have to take notes. There's a set of Cornell here if you want them. Um, otherwise, take your own Cornell notes or use your own system. We're going to have a quiz sometime soon and then we'll have a test and a project after that. Um, so you do need to keep your notes organized. You do need to stay up with them. As of now, you should have culture, history, economics, government, and geography. Before the quiz, I will put up a study guide slash, you know, notes type answer type deal, but more of that to come. All right, so geography. The first thing we need to do is describe it, give it a definition. It's the study of Earth, including climate, natural resources, landforms, and the division of land into continents and countries. That's kind of the surface explanation. Um, and I want you to read this on your own, but we're going to go through and take it that next step. How does geography affect culture? How would geography affect civilization? That's where we're going with this. So first we got to get the big stuff. We have so when I say blank is to the southeast or to the northeast, we got to kind of know what that means. So the first thing is I'm straight up telling you this should be review, but you need to know the continents, okay? North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, and Australia, and we have Antarctica here. A lot of the times I leave Antarctica out because there is no permanent civilization there. Um, it is huge, however, um, there's only about 50 given people there at any given time, so really there are no permanent civilizations there. The next thing I really need you to know are your cardinal directions, north, east, south, and west. What this does is it gives us a perspective in the world. So one example is we think of the Middle East, right? Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Afghanistan, um, all of these countries here, that's the Middle East because if you're going east from the United States all the way over, it's in the middle, right? But if you're in Europe or if you're in Asia, it's Southwest Asia. Same place, different name. But if you know your cardinal directions and you know your continents, you can figure out where anything is. It's major. The next step in this is going to be the oceans. This is something we could talk about a whole class for. We're going to focus on three main oceans, okay? The Pacific, the Indian, and the Atlantic. The way that I remember it is whenever we go to the beach, whenever we dip our toes in the water, we are putting them in the Atlantic Ocean. If you are in California, you're going to the Pacific Ocean, right? We've got to remember that the world is a sphere, right? It wraps all the way around into a circle. So the Pacific goes all the way around these touch, and the Indian Ocean is here. If you can find the subcontinent of India, you can find the Indian Ocean. Also, the Atlantic kind of makes an S. That's the way I remember it too. But again, these three slides are 100% going to be on your tests or quizzes. You need to know it for the rest of the year so you know what we're talking about. We start in Mesopotamia, we go to Egypt, then India, China, and then over to the Middle Ages, and then we do some Meso-Latin American stuff. Now, I do want to make this point. You've seen these things before. The map we were just looking at was called a Mercator projection. And this map is kind of lying to you. It's, it's, it's a political reason. And we'll talk about that as a class, but the Peters projection is the map I try to use the most, okay? The Mercator projection makes America look bigger than it is, 
it makes Africa look smaller, and it makes Europe look bigger. So there's a few issues that I want to discuss with y'all, not in a recording. It's a discussion we have to have. So this is not going to be on a test or quiz, but this just might answer a question of why you see different shapes in different maps. We'll talk about the Peters and Mercator projections. All right. So if you've taken good notes, it's time to see one, do one, teach one. You need to stop doing your geography notes for now. Go back. Make sure you have all the questions answered and start studying and reviewing everything you need to know for this section. We're going to continue on and do the five themes quickly. And let's start and kind of explain what the five themes of geography are. This helps us apply our understanding of geography. It's like, do you ever like look at pictures and you see different cultures in different places and you're like, wait a minute, why are their houses built differently? Or why do they look a certain way? Or like, why do the trees go this way? It's like my, my wife's sister who lives in Madison, Wisconsin, they had a heat wave a few years ago. And if you know anything about Madison, it's really cold all the time. So when it gets hot, they don't have air conditioning. Also, their houses are built to keep the heat inside. So when there's a heat wave, that's like, you know what I'm saying? It really affects them. So your geography has a real impact on your life. I want you to read over all these yourself, but I'm going to quickly kind of explain each one. Place is what makes something unique. Like, look, Piedmont right now is just a building because you're not in it. It's a building. It turns into a school when it's filled with children. That's what makes it a place. Y'all make Piedmont a place. Um, since I've been home, like, you know, we were at the hospital and we brought Max home, and we have Eliza here. It's like, it's I can't believe life before him, right? So Max makes this place a place, my new baby, right? Um, so we'll talk about this more. Um, so region. There's the region is something that's defined by certain or similar characteristics. One way you can look at it is like, I don't know if too many people know this, but like barbecue, like the barbecue we eat, like right, like roasted pork or roasted chicken, in the coast, they use vinegar, right? In the mountain areas, they use a like a like a like a tomato base to marinate it, right? So like same state, same food, but based on where you are, it's cooked and prepared differently. When um I lived in New York, uh someone said, let's go to a barbecue. And I said, Are we having chicken or pork? And they were like, no, man, we're just going to grill out hot dogs. And the point is, like, up there, grilling or barbecuing was a verb. It was an action. It's something you do. Down south, barbecue is a noun. It's like a thing. It's like a sandwich, right? So that's just based on region. The same thing with, like, when I was in, like, my cousins that are from Iowa. They were like, do you want a pop? And I thought they were going to, like, hit me in my face. But they were talking about, like, a soda, right? So, or like lightning bug versus firefly, or, you know, bubbler versus water fountain. There's all these different ways to describe region, and we'll talk about them when we share it as a class. Now, movement can be a tricky one, because a lot of, I'm going to jump to the bottom here, and like a cell phone, a lot of people think like, oh, it's my fingers moving. No, it's the idea coming from your brain into the phone. So it's the way people, products, information, and ideas move from one place to the other. So like goods, products they move in car boat train like they're moved across the country we'll talk about that a great deal however ideas move just the same way um we'll talk about the silk road or you know some of these great trading routes that people had and as they moved ideas moved with them like a paper currency or um religion or medicine all sorts of things moved with people, and it's not like the physical act of them walking, but it's the ideas, it's the exchange of ideas. The next thing we look at is HEI, Human Environment Interaction. And that's how people adapt to their environment and how they change it. So look, the, the weird thing about HEI is like Charlotte going way, 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 way back in time, it was a trade route for Native Americans, right? So they would meet where downtown Charlotte is, different, different tribes would meet, and they would trade their goods, and they would go their separate ways. What's, think to yourself, what's the major business that happens in downtown Charlotte now? It's banking. So it's trading that's going on, but how does it look different? How has downtown Charlotte changed in those hundreds of years, even though the same activity is going on there? Think about if you grew up high in the mountains, what would your day be like? What would you need to get through the day versus if you grew up in a swamp? 
What if you grew up in a really cold place? What if you grew up in a hot place? So again, think about the stuff you have in your pockets with you every day. Do you have to have three changes of clothes because it's going to pour down rain? Or it's going to be so hot you're going to sweat through it? Or do we have like a normal climate? So these are big ideas. Um, I, in, in the perfect world, I'd like to spend a day talking about each one. But this is something you will see throughout 7th grade, 8th grade, high school, and how you apply them is different, but just having a good base understanding of what each one is and being able to be conversational about it is very important. So now you've had two days worth of notes, so it's time to review it, let it soak in, make sure you really kind of know it and you're able to talk about it. I will provide a quick study guide, kind of cheat sheet this Thursday, but that is not going to help you unless you are going over everything now. I will put uh, announcements on Canvas. Good luck. I wish you the best and check Canvas for our weekly schedule.